one of the things that we find over and over again with the only 10 examples that we have of synagogues in the, in the first century, but a few of them in the Galilee, is that we have this side room. This is the Beit Midrash room. This is the original Safsalim, the original chairs where they are sitting, right, surrounding in, in order to hear the teachings. What kind of things do you think are being discussed here in the main room of teaching, of mm. discussions, of meeting for the community of Magdala in the first century? What kind of, what kind of discussions do you think are taking place? Shalom! Welcome back to my YouTube channel! So we will continue our journey to the beautiful and amazing city of Magdala. Enjoy this beautiful view of the Sea of Galilee. Here are the two things you probably did not know about the Sea of Galilee, best known for the place where it is said Yeshua's walk on water. First, it is not really a sea, it is a fresh water lake. Second, the Sea of Galilee is the lowest freshwater lake on earth and the second lowest lake in the world, after the Dead Sea, of course. So guys, here we are. We have a quick stop to check and to inspect the rooms in the Magdala Hotel. Come and join us! Guys, so now we are here in Magdala Hotel and we're having an inspection from the, of the rooms and uh, yes, Liette, say hi. Hey! It's my Great personal bag, so it's hi. okay. Hi! <laughs> Magdala. A beautiful yeah. morning, the sun shining, Mount Carmel behind hotel. us. Beautiful hotel with wonderful people. Yom Tov, let me know. Now, it's time to visit one of the most amazing archaeological sites of the 1st century synagogue in Magdala with our professional guide, Eretz Berkovitz. Why, why Magdala? Why put Magdala at the top of the headlines? And you know, the Magdala hits the headlines every once in a while, right? Maria Magdalena. But in, ter <laughs> but in terms, I was waiting for someone to jump with me. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not mentioned uh, in the New Testament as a site for a miracle, an act, a teaching, a healing. Rather, if we wanted to go to the heart of uh, really what is the uh, gospel, the world of the gospel, right? The, the teachings, the miracles, 
of Jesus, then we need to go to places like Capernaum, for example, right? I mean, if 80%, let's say, of, of the acts of Jesus in Galilee take place in this, of the acts of Jesus are in Galilee, then more than half of them are in Capernaum. So what's the difference? What does Magdala give us? What's the difference between going to the sites around the Sea of Galilee, like Capernaum, Tabcha, Korazim, where we're going to continue to later on this morning, and the site that we have here? And the big difference is that whilst we walk into Korazim and Capernaum, looking for the site of the synagogue that's in the text, where is the house of Peter? Here's the house of Peter in the text. Where is the uh, markets? Where is the sites that are taking place, all the miracles? We can find the site of commemoration, but on top of them is Byzantine and sometimes Crusaders and all different eras above it. And what do we have in Magdala? 30 centimeters below the topsoil, untouched, never to be uh, uh, rebuilt upon since its destruction in the year 67, which is the continuation of the rebellion, right? The great revolt against Vespasian. What do we have in Magdala? We have the first century. And that's the headline for Magdala. You have the opportunity now to bring the pilgrim to actually touch the world that is Galilee, the world that Jesus would have known in the first century. I'll give you an example of that. Inside the synagogue, which is the headline that we're going to be dealing with for the first part of the talk, is found a coin. This coin here. This coin was minted in Tiberias. Now, actually, Magdala is older than. Tiberius. Magdala was already established in probably the heart of the Galilee from the Hasmonean era, right? So predates Tiberius by 150 years or so, 200 years. Tiberius would be established by King Herod's son, Herod Antipas, and he will mint a coin with his name on it. And the date of this coin is the year 29 AD. 29 AD, AD. is exactly as Jesus is walking, being chased out of Nazareth, Right, which is behind us, behind you, in front of me, right below the Arbel and up to the uh, lower Galilee, on the way to Capernaum. Mm -hmm. What passes from Nazareth to Capernaum? Magdala. Mm -hmm. What exists in Magdala on exactly the same journey and exactly the same days as Jesus? This synagogue, this marketplace, the villas, everything that you can see, 30 centimeters below topsoil, untouched ever since. That's what it means to walk into Magdala. It means, guys, that with our pilgrims, we can start to take the findings, right, the, the material, and start to pave the way for a spiritual journey. Rather than going to Capernaum or to Corazim, and we have some surprises for you in Corazim, don't worry, it's not, we're, gonna, we're not going to Corazim to see nothing, right? There's some big surprises actually for you in Corazim, but to find the first century is always a little bit, let's just say, difficult. Mm -hmm. In those regions, as you're going to hear about later on this morning, while it's in Magdala, we have it unadulterated, right? Sitting here, never been touched ever since. The story of Magdala, by the way, does go beyond the destruction in the year 67. And you'll have uh, Byzantine uh, churches, and we have later on Crusaders, but they're not here. Where are they? They're inside the trees that you can see, those big, tall, uh, ficus trees out on towards the beach area. That's where the Franciscans are. The Franciscans came there already in the 70s looking for the first century and they were digging and they were digging for 40, 50 years. They didn't find first century. Had they thrown a small rock in the other direction to where we're standing, everything here is first century. And if you guys have been following the news, then you know that Magdala does not just have one first century synagogue now. Magdala mm -hmm. now has two first century synagogues as the junction, you notice the woodworks and the excavations mm -hmm. on the outside of the road, you saw it guys? Yeah. Yeah. But what have they found there? Oh, and they wow. announced it for my birthday, my 40th birthday, <laughs> is that my 40th birthday? <laughs> this, this was a gift from Magdala. <laughs> <laughs> what did they announce there? The second first synagogue. century synagogue wow. in one village. That's never happened before. That means that Magdala, all that she does each time is break records. Break records. Make <laughs> precedences, right? That's what it means to be in Magdala. And that's what happens in 2009. In 2009 comes the excavation and they find here, and by the way, they're excavating to build the hotel here. Mm -hmm. right, the hotel was supposed to be built on this side here. They had to change the hotel in order to uh, accommodate for the excavations mm -hmm. that have been found here. But in 2009, when they start digging here, they're going to unearth a very wealthy city. Now, that's not a surprise to us, by the way, because Magdalene is not mentioned in the New Testament, but it is mentioned in Josephus Flavius, for example. Josephus mm -hmm. Flavius makes Magdala one of his bases, right? He would go out to fight against the rebels of Tiberia, Tiberius, who they rebelling against, against him, right? He would take the 230 ships 
house of Magdala. Now Josephus Flavius, maybe he could count, I don't know. Maybe not so great with arithmetic. I'm not good with arithmetic. <laughs> but 230 ships is a lot of ships. Probably an exaggeration of how many ships there were in Magdala. Just like when Josephus Flavius says that there are 40,000 people in Magdala. 40,000 people is Beit Shanskitopolis and it's mm -hmm. largest in his entire year. In other words, no way. But what is it saying? What is Josephus saying? He's saying it's big. Not only is it big, it's the biggest. It's the most important city. It's the wealthiest. It's got trade. It's got trade routes. The Via Maris. That's, a, that's something you would have heard about along your journeys in the land of Israel, right? It was called Via Maris in Latin. It was called Der Chayam in Hebrew. The trade routes that go from Damascus, the mm -hmm. Damascus down to Egypt. The offshoot of the Via Maris is passing in Badi Hamam, where we just behind us, underneath the Arbel. Magdala is on that route. Magdala is so important for trade that her real name in Greek, in other words, that it's known by, is Tarichea. What is Tarichea? It's salted fish. There were fishermen taking the fish out of the Sea of Galilee, putting them in salt pools, and we find those salt pools, and selling them to Rome. Josephus Flavius talks about trade directly from Magdala to Rome. So this is a wealthy, strong, important community. The fact that it's not mentioned in the New Testament does not mean that Jesus did not know this city, does not know this site, and it's written in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, that Jesus teaches in all of the synagogues of Galilee. Well, if he teaches in all of the synagogues of Galilee, then for sure he would have come across this one that's behind us right now. This is probably one of the most... Um, um, Wow. Mm -hmm. The most incredible. <laughs> the Magdal Synagogue is an ancient synagogue in Israel discovered at the ancient city of Magdala, close to the shore of the Sea of Galilee. The synagogue was in use in the Second Temple period, which makes it one of the oldest synagogues found in Israel. The, with the little... Um, uh, yes, can you see the Mesilot? Yeah, because people are, sitting, are yeah. sitting and reading. No, sorry, not reading. And teaching. This is the site of teaching. It's written that Jesus goes and teaches in the synagogues of Galilee. Where is he teaching? Is he teaching in the main room? No. 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 He's teaching in the Beit Midrash. One of the things that we find over and over again with the only 10 examples that we have of synagogues in the, in the first century, but a few of them in the Galilee, is that we have this side room. This is the Beit Midrash room. This is the original Safsalim, the original chairs where they are sitting, right, surrounding in, in order to hear the teachings. What kind of things do you think are being discussed? here in the main room of teaching, of discussions, of meeting for the community of Magdala in the first century. What kind of what kind of discussions do you think are taking place? I would say politics. Politics, right? And this is Galilee. So politics is not politics. Politics is? The history. War. War. Rebellion. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's Galilee, guys. Yeah. You're in Galilee. You're in Galilee. Yeah. 30 years before Jesus yeah. is in Galilee. Yeah. You have people in the caves of Arbel. What are they doing? I throwing know. themselves out of the caves of Arbel in order to uh, rebel against King Herod. Rebelling every 30 years in Galilee, guys. Wow. This is war. What do you mean, turn the other cheek? Yeah. Now you can yeah. see what the language of Jesus sounds Sound. like to the Galileans. Okay? The same discussion is going to lead this city into rebellion. 30 years after Jesus says, turn the other cheek on the Mount of, Beat on the Mount of Beatitude, Hara Oshir, up the road. Right. What happens 30 years later in the year 67? Magdala falls. You know how Magdala falls? The Romans come in three legions from the south and they push the Jewish population of Magdala into the sea. The Jewish population of Magdala takes on to rafts in the sea. The Romans take on to rafts as well. They bring them back to the shore. And when they bring them back to the shore, one by one, the Sea of Galilee, according to Josephus Flavius, is red with blood. For him to enter to the synagogue, he walked from here. Ta -da! photo over there because it's 101% sure that Yeshua walked on that. And everyone praised him. Okay. He went to Nazareth, which is where he's from, where he had been brought up. And on the Shabbat day, on the Sabbath day, he went into the synagogue as was his custom. Okay. He stood up to read. We're about to do it. And the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. That's important. 
both things are important. He stood up to read and the scroll was handed to him. Unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, this is Isaiah, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Stop. That's where he stopped. Mm -hmm. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. <laughs> sat down. Yeah. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. He began by saying to them, today, the scripture is fulfilled. Yeah. This must have been one of the streets. Wow. You see right over here that they're yes. walking and there could be stores here. There could be homes here. We can just imagine what it was in the time of uh, the first century here in the Galilee. And I think it's just religion. And this is what connects us all is the, the um, history, the archaeology to the Holy Scriptures, maybe the New Testament, maybe the Old Testament or the Tanakh, the Holy Bible. So, um, it's just inspiring, inspiring, inspiring. Thank you. Very beautiful, guys. The Magdala. So we just came from Magdala, the first century synagogue, where Yeshua taught on that synagogue. So I'm here with Raquel. Hi, everybody. Yeah. So we are here in Magdala. And you can see around us the olive trees. I don't know. Olive beautiful. Trees. Beautiful. Yes, and the palm trees, as you can see, where the dates grow. When in the, I think in the summer you can find the dates here, and then yes. you dry them, and they're delicious. <laughs> so Rachel is a uh, very well versed in the. Um, <laughs> she's religious, and she's she's know the Tanakh so much. So if you want to learn something, you need to comment below, and I will ask. <laughs> About the Orthodox Judaism. <laughs> yes. I guess what it is is because in Orthodox Judaism mm -hmm. we live it, and that's like an every day in our prayers because we mention all the things that have happened and what it is. It, we thank, we thank God what He gave Amen. us, and that's what's important to always never to forget what God gave us, even if it's just a little piece of fruit, even a little piece Amen. of bread that you eat in the morning. Remember that this is, doesn't just come out of nowhere. This yeah. is what God gave us, and this is what we have to cherish, and we have to learn to appreciate what we have. Amen. 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 Next, we visited the Duke in Aldum, which is still in Magdala. Antipas is the same Herod who is going to behead John the Baptist. Mm -hmm. So maybe Joanna even came across the prophets going to John the Baptist from the even hearing personally from John the Baptist. And maybe Joanna is even linked to Magdala because Magdala we know is a site of ministers, it's a site of the capital, and the lands of ministers, the lands of Magdala are lands of ministers. From there comes the name. Ginosar. Mm. What is the name Ginosar comes from? Sure. According to David Flusser, the great writer from the Hebrew University, right? In the, mm -hmm. the, in the 1980s. David Flusser writes that Ginosar comes from, from two words. Gane, Gane Hassan. Ah. The gardens of the ministers. Ah. And so, where's the gardens? That's the capital of mm -hmm. Where's the ministers? Magdala. So, this is the world of Magdala. You have Joanna, you have Susanna, and you even have one. Three. One that you can put your own name on it. <laughs> and in every pilgrim's mind that comes with me into this, uh, into this site, it, this entire uh, is dedicated to the women of faith, the women of God. Now, if you look at the pillars, what happens if you bring down the pillars? They fall down. They fall down. The church yeah, falls the down. Church fall so down. what is the church saying essentially? We are built, supported Each by mm -hmm. the women. By the women, yeah. Not just yeah. Mary Magdalena, but also all the women of the All Bible. the women of the Bible. 
is that right there? I can't see what it says here. Moi. All of the women of the Bible is mm -hmm. one of the pillars. Yeah. Anyone that walks in humanity with the workings of God. Martha. You have here an extract written from a letter from Pope John Paul II. Mm. Pope John Paul II wasn't here, but Pope Francis was in 2014. Remember when the Pope mm -hmm. Francis came to the Holy Land in 2014? He blessed the opening of the altar of the, here yeah. in, the, in the main church. And so this is written in order to say thank you for the mystery of the women and then the church is built on this is the mystery of the women mm -hmm. and then the church is built on their uh, dignity and on their workings through humanity mm -hmm. and of all humanity so this is the words of the poem okay mm -hmm. above here you recognize uh, mexico lady uh, uh, Guadalupe. Guadalupe. yeah this one Have you been there? It's Me she's Mexican. Mexican. So she's Mexican. She's Mexican. You're Mexico, so yeah. You, so you would recognize that very well. And then you hear we have some kind of discussion between sky, mm -hmm. okay, water. Ah, water. yes. There's this green marble that the, that the boat is built upon. Mm -hmm. The boat yeah. of uh, beautiful Eres tree. Mm -hmm. It's very important. Eres. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, that's the context of uh, going out to the island. Mm -hmm. Here we have the baptistry, that to take the water, the holy water, the mm -hmm. baptism, but which, by the way, is linked to what? To giving life, mm -hmm. new life. New what life. the women in humanity's role is to give life. 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 This is kind of the womb of the church, mm -hmm. right? the womb of faith. So that's the kind of discussion that's being made here for the pilgrim who's going to walk into the world of the disciples, the workings of Jesus. And if you go into the main chapel, which you can do so in just a moment, you'll find that there are the 12 disciples on the icona, yeah. iconas that mm -hmm. are surrounding the room. And 11 of them have a halo, halo, yeah. halo mm -hmm. around them. And one doesn't. Who doesn't? Judas. Judas. Mm -hmm. But here, we call it not a corner for Judas, we call it a painting. Oh. Okay, this is a slight difference. You know, you guys, you guys are a bit familiar with Ikona, right? This is, uh, this is out of the twelve. So it's not okay. the saint. The, the twelve, that is represented here because this is the world of the disciples. Mm -hmm. The world of the twelve. Yeah. So he's represented here. It's just that he's not in a, he doesn't, he doesn't have a... Okay, Judas is Karyot. Yeah, he doesn't have a, a hila and he doesn't have the context of our icona. You know, icona is a painting. These paintings were made by uh, Christian Orthodox uh, Chilean artists. That when you make the icona, you are in meditation, you are in uh, spiritual journey. First century, understanding the world of gospel, understanding the world of Jesus, uh, getting rid of all the other areas, but then also providing a modern context of what it means to be on pilgrimage today. And this capella, this chapel, okay, which is called the Chapel of the Encounter, and with Gash and the Encounter, this chapel kind of brings all of that world together. You'll notice that the ground is paved, and this is the original pavement. From the marketplace that is adjacent at This is the marketplace of the port. Just outside the window here, and also the building, is the port, the original port of Magra from the first century, with the for the ropes, right, with the with the uh, um, no, where, the, where you tie up the, the Magan, right, where they could bring in the, the ships and stuff. And that's just sitting on the other side of where we are. And this is the main marketplace. So it means that the fishermen get out of the ships right here and they bring this produce right to here. If you are a fisherman in Galilee, do you think you would know this marketplace? 
You think it warm on this marketplace? This is Fisherman's HQ in Galilee 2000 years ago. Not just fishermen, by the way, but also tax collectors, Roman centurions, right? Well, Sadducees, mm -hmm. Stukin, Pharisees, Pushin. In other words, all of the world of Galilee is going to meet where? Yeah. On exactly yeah. the rocks that we're standing on where we are walking. What is this design that is a modern design? Okay, it's not the original. What does this design make you think of right now? How you're sitting right now, guys? Like a synagogue. Like a synagogue. You know, they even took the pigment from the frescoes that were found inside the synagogue and in a laboratory in Germany, they could find out from which pigments it comes from and they took the same pigment in order to do a restoration, to do a, a copy of the frescoes like how they would be painted inside the synagogue. So you are back inside the world of the synagogue. You're back inside the world of Jewish Galilee 2000 years ago, the workings of Jesus, the footsteps of Jesus on this most colossal of sites. And then comes a Chilean uh, painter, uh, okay, I'm just trying to remember his name, it's Daniel Carino, okay. and he is commissioned to depict one of the acts of Jesus. Okay, whether this act takes place in Magdala or in Capernaum or something, you can discuss it, but one of the acts of miracles, of what it means to come and to touch healing. But what does it mean in the exact moment that it happens? Because the exact moment that it happens is mentioned in the text, as you're about to find out. When Jesus says that he can feel the healing come out of him. He was not approached. He was not spoken to. He doesn't know who it is that's coming and asking for the healing. But just from touching the physical came the spiritual. And if you look very carefully at the picture, can you see that the lady that was bleeding according to the, as we're going to read it in just a moment, according to the book of Mark, book of Mark chapter 5, she's bleeding, for, no, she's bleeding for 12 years. And the lady goes out to touch what's written on the hem of the garment. The tzitzit. The tzitzit. Very good. Okay, the talit. Okay, so what is she essentially touching? She's touching the tzitzit. Okay, it doesn't look that it's the pressure. She's touching the threshold. And the threshold, you have how many knots? Six hundred and thirteen. Why six hundred thirteen? That's the mitzvot. mitzvot. Jesus says on the Mount of Beatitudes, I didn't come to, abolish to the Torah. delete, to expel the law of Moses. I came to fulfill it. The law of Moses. To touch 613 is to touch the fulfillment of law, the fulfillment of the of Moses, the ministry of Jesus. And if you look very carefully, the healing is just taking place. Can you see it? Can you see that just at the tip of her finger, she's already healed. That's the moment that the healing has come. Wow, that was really mind-blowing, guys. We had a blessed time in touring the city of Magdala. I hope you enjoyed watching too. And if it blesses you, please share this video to everyone. So, I see you again in my next vlog on another exciting adventure here in the land of Israel. The next site that we're going to visit, it's Korasim.